Writing a real-world situation from an equation, lesson 7.2c. Real-world situations can often be represented by equations involving fractions and decimals. Fractions and decimals can represent quantities such as weight, volume, capacity, time, and temperature. Decimals can also represent dollars and cents. We can write a real-world situation that is modeled by an equation. If we had 0 0.5, we could write it as 0 0.50 with a dollar sign to be 50 cents. And if we had 0 0.25, we could write it as a dollar sign 0 0.25 for 25 cents. We could say it's the number of pens, x, at 50 cents each is equal to the number of pencils, x, at 25 cents each plus $2. Here it's telling us to write a real-world situation modeled by the equation 1 fourth x plus 2 is equal to 1 half x. A possible real-world situation that I came up with is a container of beans at a store is 1 fourth full after 2 additional pounds of beans are added to the container. The container is 1 half full. How much will the container hold when it's full? Now be careful. It's not asking us to solve the equation. It's asking us to think of a real-world situation that fits the equation. Here it's asking us again to write a real-world situation modeled by the equation 44 and 5 tenths x minus 5 is equal to 42x. We can write these as money amounts. A possible real-world situation could be store A sells jeans for $44.50 each with a coupon for $5. It's $5 off the total sale. Store B sells jeans for $42 each. How many pairs of jeans, that would be our X, must a customer buy for the cost to be the same at both stores? So in an equation such as 50 and 2 tenths x plus 4 is equal to 11x, this is a variable term. Here's another variable term, and this is our constant term. So remember, the variable term describes a quantity that changes, such as a rate. And the constant term describes a quantity that is not changing. Take a look at this equation. We have x plus whatever x is plus 1 plus whatever x is plus 2 is equal to 4.5x. A possible real-world situation would be Sam wants to find three consecutive integers whose sum is 4 and 5 tenths times the first of those integers. He let x represent the first integer. So when you see an equation like this, x then plus whatever x is plus 1, then whatever x is plus 2. This is an equation for consecutive numbers. It could be the pages in a book. It could be a page, and then the next page would be whatever that page is plus 1, and then the page after that would be whatever that page is plus 2. Now, let's try solving this one. The first thing we would do is combine the like terms on the left side of the equation. We have an x, an x, and an x. That means we have three x's. We have three x. And we have 1 plus 2. That's 3. So really, this entire left side of the equation is really 3x plus 3, and it's equal to 4 and 5 tenths x. We use inverse operations. We would subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. This is a positive 3x. We have a negative 3x. That would get a zero pair. So that's gone. That's eliminated. Now we just have 3 is equal to 1.5x because we have 1.5 after we subtract 3x from this side. We divide both sides by this coefficient, 1.5, and 3 divided by 1.5 is 2. We know 2 is equal to x. That means the first integer is 2 which means the next integer is 3, and the next integer is 4, and 2 plus 3 plus 4 is equal to 9, and since we had 4.5x, that means 4.5 times 2, that's equal to 9, so yes, we solved it correctly. So just remember, whenever you see an equation like this, it's looking for consecutive integers. It could be 2, 3, 
4 because we're adding 1 to the original number, then we're adding 2 to the original number. That's three consecutive numbers. You might see equations like this where it's saying consecutive even numbers or consecutive odd numbers. Remember, to solve an equation that involves fractions, we multiply both sides of the equation by the least common multiple of the denominator. We did that in 7.2a. And to solve an equation that involves decimals, we multiply both sides of the equation by a power of 10. Whatever the power of 10 is that would remove those decimals, we did that in 7.2b. And the solution of an equation may be a fraction or decimal even though we removed them from the equation. We're moving on to lesson 7.3 and we're going to be discussing using the distributive property. If you're still very confused about how to write a real-world situation from an equation, look at the examples in your textbook. Change it a little bit. If it's talking about rice, use beans like I did here and maybe change the numbers a little bit and make sure that the equation makes sense. I hope you have the rest of the day go your way and is great and I hope you join me for the next lesson. Bye!